now, after Sam gonna do this for the last, like, 40 minutes, let's actually do it. Oh, these are the Sky Clan. Different markings. Regala's forces may seem strong now, but her machines took out my entire squad. Remember the visions. The old ones didn't choose their fight, but still they stood firm. They didn't falter. And neither will we. She have like. Is that red paint around her nose and mouth, or did she did she have like a broken nose and it's bleeding? You've come to us. You know who I am? Oh, the warrior with hair like wildfire who defeated Regala's champion at Baron Lai. <laughs> yes. You are known to us. I am Decca, chaplain of the Lowland clan. You've come to speak with Chief Hikaro. Not quite. There's... there's something I need here. Anything you need, the Chief will provide. Come. Is that one of the visions you were talking about? Yes. The records of the Ten. I can show you them, if you like. On the way to the Chief. These... visions... You said they're the records of the Ten. Who are they? Old ones. Who fought a heroic battle against machines on this very soil long ago. Their deeds are honored in the visions. <laughs> At least what remains of them. To be remembered and exalted. There used to be more of these visions? Many more. Once this place was filled with light and sound. But over the years, they've fallen into darkness. One by one. That is why chaplains are so important to the tribe. We remember all we can of the visions. Etched in our flesh. Passed down by word of mouth from generation to generation. One day the whole grove may go dark. But chaplains who come after me will keep the memories alive. What does it mean to be a chaplain here? We who outlast our youth study the visions and share their wisdom with our young. What kind of wisdom? How to be a true warrior. To fight with bravery and unflinching honor. And to know when to call for peace. You can see for yourself when we go inside. Why does Hikaru want to see me? We are at war with Regatha. And you've already shown that you can stand against her. I'm not here to fight a war for you. Not for us. With us. But I won't try to persuade you. Didn't even That's have to look at the subtitle to know she was going to say with us. It can be very convincing. Alright. Let's go see Chief Akaro. He's in his throne room. At the far end of the grove. Come. Be welcome among the records of the ten. So this is the uh, the big daddy of all the Tanakh. Oh, looks like this is where we're gonna turn in all the black boxes. Cause you can see the black box logo or the symbol with uh, the star. It's glitched. Incomplete. Joint Force 10 active. Led by Kamaran. These weapons were only in the battle. The 10 were dedicated soldiers, working together as a squad and sharing in their duty. And when the time came for battle, they took to the skies and leaped to glory. All Tanakh seek to follow their example. For the chief, it was one of the few things the clans had in common. Aloy! Hey, I've been a while since 
Lady Mark. Well met, Aloy. I was hoping we'd run into each other again after the flood and Bleeding Mark. Natika. So you did it. You're part of the Chief's Guard now. It wasn't an easy choice, but yes. After you left, we laid Kentok to rest and I thought about what he said. He served his clan, his tribe, as best as he could. I have to do the same. I'm sure he'd be proud. And he'd reprimand me for allowing myself to be distracted. <laughs> Can't have that. Thank you again, Aloy. Strike true as the Ten. During their war, the Ten climbed sheer rock. Braving blinding snow and wind, they stopped at nothing to protect their own. You make them sound invincible. They weren't. But the visions tell us of their courage and strength. Something our soldiers aspire to. The Sky Clan admires this one above all the rest. They make their home in the mountains northwest of here. There we go. Go ahead and pause and read that if you'd like. What's this one about? The ten waged war against their enemy in the desert heat. A land too harsh for any to survive. But against all odds, they prevailed. So the Desert Clan does the same. You must have passed through their territory on the way here. I did. They uh, seem a little... extreme. They take that as a compliment. I'm gonna guess it's where they got the color schemes. You know, or that, that you know, because that one's kind of a red, orange, yellow, black. That one's kind of a purple and blue. And the other one was, uh, yeah, the sort of white, blue, and red. Yeah, because the Desert Clan, Lowland Clan, and Sky Clan all have different kind of color schemes. So it would make sense that the visions would be the things that kind of point out those, you know, kind of dictate things. I don't know, just a theory. Soldiers in a jungle. Those were the ten? Yes. They knew how to use the jungle's depths to distract the enemy until the perfect moment to strike. Generations ago, my clan, the Lowland, looked to this one for inspiration as they claimed the jungle to the southwest. Yeah, I'm I'm really thinking that's how the the color scheme and the markings kind of broke down again just a guess but eh, decent visual storytelling in a way now and, and that's the way i like my visual storytelling it's not a super important detail but it's a nice detail when you kind of notice it you have an old world recording and who knows i'm just taking a total shot in the dark but now there's noise over them let me take a look where did you find this we took it from an asaram delver she was trying to steal it, and other artifacts from Tanakh territory. The others were going to bury it in the sand with her. But then I heard the voices. Well, the data here is badly corrupted, but... Delta Juliet 9, you are weapons free and clear to engage the swarm. Good hunting. Copy that. We'll buy Zero Dawn the time you need. Delta Juliet 9, out. 
The voices of warriors from the past. And that Osiram wanted to sell them for shards. The bravery of the Ten should be remembered. I'm not sure what you mean by the Ten. These voices came from the final battle of the Old Ones. Another battle? I could learn more about it if I could find the other boxes. That Delver did say there might be more recordings to be found in the wreckage of ancient flying machines. She claimed she had a way to locate them. Yeah. The box with the voice data on it is emitting a locator signal. I could use it to find the others. If you do then, bring them back here. I will see to it that they're treated with proper respect. Whatever sacrifices were made by these ancient soldiers, we will honor them. You know, Aloy kind of came at that with that, uh, it, it, that sort of thing that I hate when atheists do it to the Christians. It's like, oh, well, that's not the work of God. That's, and then they rattle off the science behind it. I, I, I get it. That is the science behind it. But treating people like they're idiots because they don't, I don't want to say don't know, because I guess this isn't a one-to-one -one comparison, because this is a primitive society that was built off, of, that came after a, an adva a more advanced society. Aloy knows the truth, but not everyone does know the truth. So they explain the technology and the science they see through a religious sort of experience while she just comes at them like, ugh, idiots. I mean, I, I've, I've known atheists, I've known Christians, I've known people in between, people of a few different religions, you know. The thing we can all, kind of all agree on with this is, yeah, maybe we disagree when it comes to faith and what the real answer is or whatever, but we, we all have a respect for it. I hate those people that come in and say, ugh, you're all idiots, there's nothing, you know. I Like I, like I said, like I, I've even known people who aren't religious, who are atheists, and go... But, you know, hey, man, you believe what you want to believe. That's, it's, it is what it is, and that's, that's life. I don't know. I just, it, that, I kind of said it throughout this game. I, I think at, por at parts they're trying to make Aloy seem like the rational mind, that hard girl boss, oh, I can do anything. But she just kind of comes across as a dick. <laughs> Why do you want these recordings? Every battle teaches its soldiers. We should learn those lessons and honor those who fell. That is our way. Do you get many Osirum Delvers in Tanakh's territory? Fewer every time we catch them, but those thieving rats would do anything for the shards. There'll always be some who will risk coming here. And what do you do with the ones you catch? Delvers spend their lives in the dust. So we bury them in it. Alive. <laughs> Really, Aloy? You're not going to have some sort of moral indignation to that? We're just going to still... Ha Whatever. I've already found a recording. I'll take any you find. Uh, let me give you something for it. Okay, a Scorcher Scanning Ear. I think I've seen one of those, but sure, I'll buy it. I'm going to guess that those are going to be useful when it comes to... Um, Overriding machines. Just a guess, but if I find more of those recordings, I'll my focus can detect beacons from those recording devices. Should help me to find any others that are still out there. What's this? It was planted there by the chief. Ask him if you're curious. It's his tale to tell. The chief is inside. Are you ready to see him? I'm ready. Good. Come.
what's underneath the throne. I will see you soon, Outlander. The savior of Meridian. I am already love him. Back Regalus forces outside Baron Light. Dig his voice. And defeated her champion, Grutta. In single combat. Impressive. I met Fashav there, too. He said you were a great warrior. And a man of honor. His death is a painful loss among many. We will not soon recover from the massacre of our marshals. But if you are here to pledge your service, that could help considerably. I am not here to fight for you. I need something in that basement. Something that will save many lives, yours included. It's not something you can see, but it is there. I have seen it. You have named your price. Now I name mine. With my marshals dead, I need your spear. Help me defeat my enemies, and I will grant you access to the chamber below. I don't have a price. I am not a hired killer. Really, I Aloy? Can save lives more than you can count. I count the corpses of Marshal slain. I count hundreds more to knock them whose lives hang in the balance, I will fight for them. I will kill anyone who threatens the peace, and you will too, if you want me to open the door to the chamber below. Okay. So by that logic, what's stopping me from killing you right now? And taking what I need to save everyone? With that threat, you don't get to claim the moral high ground. You might even succeed. Either way, you must fight. My way might hold off Regala and the slaughter she craves. Fine. What do you need? I need more marshals to keep the tribe together. Such warriors can only be promoted at a trial by combat called the Cool Root. I've sent out a call for the competition. Since Regala seeks to undermine me, she is certain to attack it. She'll want to kill me in front of the assembled clans. So what, you want me to be your bodyguard? No. To defend the Kuru. Cool but there is more. Knowing Regala will attack, one of the clans have balked at sending their contestants. You must go north and force Tecote, the commander of the Sky Clan, to submit and send his best. Force him to submit. Do whatever is necessary. I can't hold a cool route with two of the three clans in attendance. Marshal Katala will assist you. He was maimed at Baron Light, but he can still be of use. I sent him ahead to the northern village of Stone Crest. Meet him there and he will guide you to the Sky Clan stronghold. If you have any questions about your mission, now is the time. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't get why she had this moral indignation to, uh, you're asking me to go kill people? Oh my god, I can't believe you. He's asking you for your help to deal with Regala. I mean, that's not a... Uh, a... <laughs> I, I I don't know. I mean, maybe if she had the moral aversion to fighting and death, but she's fought to defend uh, River Him or whatever the hell that one place was. That was one side mission. We've fought to protect other outposts against Regala's uh, army. We've cleared out a bunch of their strongholds. Why do you now have an issue with being asked to fight Regala to be able to get towards Aether, or Ether, or whatever the hell uh, sub-program that we're looking for? I. It feels like she's there just... It, it, she's going to bounce around morally 
just to act like, well, I'm in the right of every situation. This is what I was saying earlier, where Aloy, I don't hate Aloy as a character, but I hate certain aspects of her. And it's not necessarily the character's fault. It's the people writing her to be so wishy-washy on a lot of things. And it, it bugs the shit out of me. I'm sorry about Fashav. You seem like a good man. More than a man. A bridge between Tanakh and Karja. No outlander ever earned our respect as he did. I had hoped he would be my voice in Meridian. That peace with the Karja might become something more. An alliance? In exchange. The Karja have much we lack. Our deeds are written in ink upon our bodies. Our memories die with our flesh. But the Karja never forget. Their deeds are written in book and scroll. You wanted to learn from them? As I learned from Fashav, he will be missed. Fashav called Regala your greatest mistake. Why? That is not your concern. Really? I fought against her forces at Baron Light, and I don't even know what her problem is. She was the deadliest of my marshals, the point of my spear. So what happened? Above all, Regala despises the Karja who burned her younger brothers alive. After we turned back the Red Raids and tore down the battlements of Baron Light, she hoped to chase them all the way to Meridian. She could not see the cost of such a war, nor the benefits of peace after the Mad Sun King fell. When I accepted Avad's entreaties, she went mad, called me traitor challenged me before the marshals. What did you do when Regala challenged you? If you were to knock, you would know that such a challenge cannot be refused. It was not easy to subdue her. I bear seven scars from that fight. The other marshals wanted me to execute her on the spot, but I found I could not sever the bond between us. Her loyalty had been as boundless as her rage, so I spared her. Rather than mercy, she took it as a humiliation, one she will never be free from. So Regala wants you dead. She does. But that will not be enough. She won't rest until all three clans fall in behind her as she marches on Meridian. Who knows? With machines under her control, perhaps she can raise it to the ground. It's been tried before. So I hear. What exactly is the cool route? Where once the clans fought each other, now we fight as one against the machines. That is my law made manifest in the cool route. Each clan must send contestants whenever I call for the ritual. These contestants face trial by combat against machines in an arena just beyond these walls. Those who distinguish themselves become marshals who bind the tribe together as peacekeepers. And let me guess, those who die, die? So essentially it's kind of like the proving for the Nora. A little more Roman, but it works. You called them peacekeepers, but the marshals I met at the embassy were warriors. Warriors, yes. Yeah. They renounce the clan that birthed them and pledge themselves to order and peace. They enforce my law. They settle disputes and stand for Tanakh in parley with other tribes. Without them, I cannot rule. Which is why you must ensure the next cool route takes place. I mean, peacekeepers, they're also soldiers and warriors, as most of the Tanakh are. I mean... I, I, I think it makes perfect sense. Why the Sky Clan send contestants to the cool route? Of the three clans, they have the most defensible base, protected by a mighty wall called the Bulwark. Their commander believes he can wait out the war between Regala's forces and my own, safe behind his barrier. Staying strong while you and Regala weaken each other. You think like a seasoned marshal. Good. Why send me to deal with the Sky Clan? All to not respect strength, and you drove Regala back at Baron Light. That and most of your marshals are dead? Correct. What about Catalo? 
Can't he do it by himself? He is maimed. They will no longer respect him. That hardly seems fair. What is fair about losing? Well, yeah, life's not fair. Whether they respect him or not, Catalo still has worth. He knows the Sky Clan. He was raised in their base. He will guide you well. You know, I mean, this is a warrior society. So, yeah, being maimed like that is not a good thing. Hell, we had a whole quest about this earlier with those Desert Clan soldiers, the one guy who got blinded. You said you saw what's in the basement? I did, on the day of my greatest victory. What do you mean? For a dozen generations, the three clans battled for control of this hallowed ground. Only I achieved it. I fought for years, killed whoever stood in my way. When I had finally slain all rivals, I stood alone in the grove. Victory was mine to savor, or so I thought. Thunder roared from the east, and a bolt of blue struck this place. That chamber. Gaia dies, and Aether arrives. All around me, the visions of the grove grew louder and brighter. And suddenly a new one appeared before me. The old ones spoke, and what they said changed everything. What did the Old Ones say to you in this new vision? The one called Faraday foretold the growing danger of the machines and said we must unify to stop them. She called for marshals to enforce the peace. Then the vision faded, never to be seen again. I marked the spot where it shone with my spear and I took Faraday's words to heart. Renounced war between the clans trained warriors to fight machines, ordained marshals through the cool route. Since then, the tribe has been at peace, until Regala attacked at Baron Light. And the chamber beneath the throne. You went in after the vision? I did. Inside is an ancient device. It hummed with power. You will see it for yourself after the cool route. This I swear. I'll do what you want, and go north to deal with Dakota. But you'd better not forget about our deal. You will have what was promised, if you succeed. Speak to Deco on your way out. She will arm you for the road ahead. Well, that was fun. That guy's got a really cool voice. Hikaru said you have something for me? A weapon to aid your mission. You'll need it for the long road to Stonecrest. Many machines prowl along the way. And our scouts have sighted Regala's rebels in the area. Machines and rebels. Nothing I haven't faced before. Indeed. Head north towards the foothills. Ascend its slopes until your legs burn and the chill air catches in your chest. Then you'll know you're in the Sky Clan's domain. Strike true as the ten, Aloy. Cleaving Sharpshot Bow. If I'm gonna get ether, guess I'll have to play along with Akaro. I better meet up with Marshal Catalo at Stonecrest. I'll be faster if I ride a machine. And holy shit, that's a far way north. Eh, oh well, it works. I'm trying to think what I want to do now. Uh, yeah, I think we'll uh, we'll just head up north, grab these question marks and everything. As we go, but I think this is where I'm going to end it for now, guys. I want to say, as always, thanks, thank you so much for watching. Social media can be found down in the description below. Please remember to like, comment, if you're not already. Please subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned for more next time. Till then, my name is AJ Gells, the Sunflake Game Channel. I'm out.